Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Claret Sterling News here on Turfcast. And some better news, obviously we started yesterday's show with the news that Fabrizio Romano reckons a few people, or a few teams, sorry, are interested in Burnley centre-back Maxime Esteve. One of the teams that he mentioned was Wolves. Well, according to a local Wolves journalist who is called Liam Keane and works for the Express and Star, which is the local newspaper in the Wolverhampton area. He reckons that Wolves are not looking um, at Maxime Esteve from Burnley. As it stands, club wants a centre-back, but he is not on the list of targets currently. Now, just going back to Fabrizio's tweet yesterday, I know he mentioned Wolves in it, but he did say a few teams were interested. But this is obviously better news then for Richard made it sound like there was going to be like loads of teams after him, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I would prefer to keep him, as I said yesterday. But if we can get two or three teams maybe bidding for him and start a bidding war, we could end up getting quite a bit for him if he was to leave. I would prefer it if he didn't, as I've already said. But that's better news. Obviously, he will be very well connected with Wolverhampton. They could be easily just, just saying no just for the sake of it. I do sometimes find that some local lads tend to be a little bit behind people like Fabrizio and Ornstein. That's not always the case. It depends on what club they're working with and whether or not they have a good relationship with that club. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't have a good relationship with the club, but sometimes local lads can just be told the, the party line by the club. They don't want the news getting out there that they're after him, so they've rejected any approach or just said no. Um, I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I know Fabrizio's contacts, I think I even mentioned it yesterday, a lot of them are agents and that's where he gets all his news from. So if it has come from Maxime's agent, that's, that tells a story in itself that maybe the agent is trying to push a move through. Maybe he fancies a payday or maybe, or maybe Maxime said to him, if a Premier League club comes... I, I can't for one second imagine Maxime pushing a move through, but he may or may not have said something like, if a decent standard Premier League team comes in or a top team in France or Spain comes in um, when I say a top team and obviously I don't mean Barcelona and PSG I mean a, a team in the top league or, or you know one of them comes in then maybe I'll think about it and then he started putting the wheels in motion I don't know but it's interesting as I've said I always trust the local lads even though I do sometimes find that they can sometimes be a little bit behind or just get in more of a club line which is obviously what they want to put out rather than what the agent wants to put out. Um, but it's interesting. Two different things. Fabrizio Romano saying Wolves are interested in him, but the local news journalist saying they are not. Um, but it's better news anyway. Fingers crossed we can keep hold of him. From some okay news to some potentially bad news, I saw this actually yesterday, but I didn't think anything of it because the source quartered was something I'd never heard of but apparently Manchester United are looking at Burnley midfielder Sander Burge now like I said I saw it yesterday full credit goes to um, which one was it now the Burnley Aces Facebook page uh, I saw it on there first but like I said the, the source that they quoted was the football transfer podcast and I was like who are them I've never heard of them that doesn't seem like a good source to me so I just left it at that and didn't even bother checking it out a little bit poor on my end to be fair uh, but it turns out the guy that hosts that podcast is Duncan Castles. Now, you may or may not know him, but he's quite well connected at Man United. And he's like, I don't know if he's overly reliable or not, if I'm if I'm perfectly honest. I haven't seen him around for a while. I totally forgot about him. I think he used to work at the Sunday Times back in the day. Um, and I used to regularly see him get a lot of stuff right about Man United back then. So I'm not sure if he's still as well connected now as what he was. But he used to be one of the main Man United guys. Um, so if he's saying that they're looking at him, again, I don't know what he's like these days, but I would suggest that they're probably looking at him, to be fair. Um, like I said, I saw it a couple of days ago, thought nothing of it, but the fact that he's now talking about it, or should I say he was the one talking about it, but I didn't realise, gives it a little bit more legs for me. Um, so yeah, do, do I think he'll go to Manchester United? Probably not. I, I don't think they'll they'll actually take up on that. It, for, for where Manchester United want to be, I don't think he's the person. Not even for backup. If I'm being honest with you, I love him. I think he's fantastic. I think he deserves to be in the Premier League. And I know Man United are nowhere near as good as what they used to be, but they want to get back to that sort of level. So I, I, I wouldn't suspect that they go for Sander Burge, if I'm being honest with you. They may or may well have not have looked at him. They may or may well have spoke to his agent about his availability, but I, I doubt it goes any further than that, if I'm honest with you. If, if he goes back to the Premier League, I, I suspect him to go to, you know, 
a, a mid-table team, which I suppose you could say Man United are these days now. But obviously, with, due to the size of the club and where they want to be, I think it's unlikely that he'll end up going there. But yeah, um, according to Duncan Castles, which is the person that I would have credited with the story, if I'm being honest with you, um, Sander Burge are looking at Manchester United. But as much as I love Sander, I'd, I'd be surprised if, if they went in for him. Obviously, the lads are out in Spain at the minute at the training camp and obviously that culminates in the friendly against Cadiz this weekend. And it's interesting, obviously, we saw um, some pictures of certain players that have come back and not any pictures of certain players that haven't gone out there. Um, but it turns out that one of the players that wasn't there, not because he didn't want to go to training or anything or that he's sulking, but uh, one of the lads that had extended period time away due to the Euros was Zeki Amdune. Well, the club have done a video on his return. This was actually yesterday, to be honest, but we had quite a lot to talk about yesterday. So I thought I'd leave it out. Um, and today there's not that much, so I'm going to talk about it today. Uh, but it's interesting to see that Zeki's back. And it's interesting to see that the club did a little bit of a fuss about it because they didn't do it for James Trafford. He just all of a sudden started showing up in pictures, did James Trafford. And but with Zeki, I'm doing it. They've made a bit of a fuss of it. They've they've put some pictures up of him and and they did a video. Um, obviously the the short form video is on your screen now, but it's there's a longer form of it on their um, vlogs that they've been doing, which I really like that content. To be fair to the club, it's it's, it's some good content. I always like the I know I've said it already, but I always love the um, behind the scenes sort of looks because it, it it gives us fans something that we don't regularly see, right? The the behind the scenes thing. So I have been really enjoying them. Um, feel free to go to the club's YouTube channel when you finish watching this obviously to watch it in full if you haven't already um, but yeah it's good to see I'm doing it back I rate him I think uh, he, he, he had peaks and troughs last year probably didn't do as well as we thought he would have done last year really think if he stays uh, he can be an absolute star in the championship He's in terms of technical ability he's brilliant I do worry that he'd be one of them players that if he's clattered in the first minute of a game he might go into his shell a little bit but the championship could, could make him you know, stronger and, and adapt to English football more if he can overcome that um, but I genuinely feel that Zeki Amdouni can be a big player for us this year uh, there's a few players that I feel that way about. Lyle Foster, for example, he showed glimpses. Obviously, he had his issues last year, but if he, if he overcomes them and plays regularly in the Championship, I think he can do very well. Luca Coley also, we all know how good he is. Obviously, Sander and Wilson are bear if we keep hold of him. But uh, Zek is one of them that's kind of going under the radar a little bit. I think people are sleeping on him a little bit. He's a very, very, very good technical player. And we can play him in that number 10 role just behind the striker. And I think he will have a brilliant season in the Championship if we can keep hold of him. But yeah, it's good to see him back. And it's interesting as well that the club have made such a fuss about it. I think that tells me that maybe they're expecting to keep hold of him. I'm not Obviously, everyone, everyone's got a price with this new business model. But if it's a little bit quiet with his agent or with people looking at him, maybe the club are expecting to keep hold of him, but we'll see. Elsewhere, and this is another one that I actually saw yesterday, but didn't think too much of it because I saw it in Football League World. And yeah, forget it. Um, but it turns out that it's actually come from Sky Sports' Lyle Thomas, and he reckons that Burnley are a number of clubs looking at Crystal Palace younger, Jezerun Rak Sakye. Now, he's still quite young, not overly young. He's 21 years old, and it would be a loan move if we are going to get in, but like I said, we are one of several championship clubs. There's also, um, I think it was Leeds and Sheffield United. Uh, I'll just quickly get it up on my screen now. Uh, yeah, Leeds, Berlin, Sheffield United among the clubs keen on taking him on loan from Crystal Palace and elect Leon as well. Southampton, however, have been looking at him throughout the summer and are keen on a permanent deal or a loan that then contains one. So that may or may not be preferable to Palace. I don't know where Palace stand on it or the loan move to to a championship club may be preferable for them so they can continue monitoring his development and then potentially sell him or, or, or promote him into the first team next year. Um, but he's a, he's a decent little youngster, to be fair. He is very highly thought of at Crystal Palace. My only issue with him is, is he's a right winger and, and everybody knows we're, it's becoming a joke now how many wingers we've got. We are very, very, very well stacked in the winger department so I'm not sure if a young up-and-coming player on loan would be the right move Burnley for him because he potentially wouldn't be playing too many games and we don't want another situation. Now, I'm not going to name any names because I've got grief for it, but I don't want any another situation where potentially it comes with a loan with a you know to play a certain amount of games or something like that. I'm not saying that happened last year before someone gives me grief. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure that Burnley would be the right move for him. I'm not sure, sh- like I said, he's very highly thought of and I do think he's a decent youngster. But is it better than what we've got potentially in a few years? Yeah, but maybe not right now. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Leeds are interested in him as well, like I said. And with Somerville leaving Leeds, uh, going to West Ham, 
maybe that might be the destination we ends up. But again, um, probably wait and see on this one and see where he ends up. Yeah, that's pretty much it from me. I'm um, going to wrap it up here, obviously. It's later on Fridays. I've been doing it later every day this week, to be fair, but it's always later on Fridays, just so I can include all of Friday's information in it as well. And it's a good job I did, because pretty much everything that I've spoken about today actually came yesterday but it was stuff that we couldn't fit in yesterday's show or stuff that has you know had a different development today and you know has, has give, been given more legs because different people are talking about it and, and things like that so it's interesting but let me know what you think as always in the comments below good news about Maxime Esteve um, but again we'll see what happens with that I do sometimes feel that local lads can sometimes be a couple of days behind people like Fabrizio Romano and David Ornstein I think it happened with the Vincent Company thing right it was Fabrizio and I think it was Sasha as well that started tweeting about it early enough and the club were originally saying no 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 nothing to do with that and some of the local lads around here were as well obviously we know where he is now so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there um, but for a bit so I did say several Premier League clubs are looking at him so fingers crossed we can keep him Sander Burge as well Manchester United too high for him maybe maybe not um, let me know what you think about Zeki as well and of course Crystal Palace, Starlet, Jesserun, Rack, Sack, yeah. So, yeah, interesting, some bits in there, but nothing overly happening at the minute, to be fair. It's quite quiet, not a lot of movement, a few rumours, but obviously, as I said earlier in the week, uh, the lads are in Spain, so it's potentially going to be a little bit quieter at the minute because of that. But next week is when it all starts. Obviously, the season starts again next week. Not for us, obviously, it's the week after with it being Monday, but the Football League season starts again next week, which means... The pre-game show will be back. I'm going to do it a little bit differently this year. It's not just going to be with me and a Luton fan. It's going to be with me and another Burnley fan. Probably be one of the lads from the podcast that you're used to. It'd either be Neil, Sam, Andrew, Chris, Liam. You know, one of the lads that I speak to. And then I'll bring in a Luton fan later on in the show. So we're going to do it a little bit differently so we can discuss Burnley topics as well. And then I can discuss the opponent, obviously in this case, Luton. And then, of course, a full-time show will be back after the game not immediately after the game normally the day after the game sometimes it's a couple of days after the game and with work it may be a couple of days after the game on Wednesday but we'll see obviously I'll put tweets out I'll let you all know subscribe to us on YouTube if you aren't already and you'll get all the notifications when we schedule lives when we go live when we upload videos as well so if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll be back with the Claritz Daily News and some more stuff looking ahead to the season on Monday <laughs>